slide will probably help us dictate this, you know, in terms of your participation and your interest. So if it is something that you're interested in, then, you know, like, let us know. But, okay, so, Emily, do you think there are universal laws in effect that apply to human behavior? Absolutely. It's true, guys. Like, I think that people are kind of unaware of these things. I know that folks are familiar with gravity and we are operating under um, the immediate consequence that you experience with gravity. But I'm not sure that people know that there's this hidden, um, you know, there's these visible sides or seen aspects of natural law. And then there's many unseen laws of natural law that a lot of people are simply unaware of. These truths, you know, this knowledge has been hidden, you know, from us. And so does our knowledge or our ignorance of these laws impact our collective freedom as a species? What do you think, Emily? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I just, I even see people who are operating on lies about themselves. You know, I have clients that come to me and they, are, they feel that it is truth that they are broken and that they are worthless and that they are useless. And my, one of my favorite things that you ever told me, and it was, it was from like day one is you said you are worthy. And I was just like, I never had someone speak to me like that. And I was just like, what? Mm -hmm. And you said it with such conviction. You, you knew, you knew that I was worthy. And I was just like, and, and, and I believed you. I don't, I didn't know why I believed you, but I just, I, I believed, believed you. you. And so I know that there's people who are coming to me, um, mm -hmm. who are believing these lies as truths and they are literally paralyzed by them. So that's a small demonstration of our ignorance. You know, we've been told for probably our whole lives, you know, I think it's real easy for everyone to say to their kids, you know, stop doing that. Or you're always doing that. And you're always saying no, no, like kids learn no before they learn yes, because that's how much they hear no. And all of these things that we we have also been taught and trained these lies we've been trained so let me ask you something else like um you know i want to explore these questions and our current understanding of universal forces that they affect our daily lives guys and they affect each and every one of us i think what people don't maybe know and i think some people know this and a lot of people may not know this is that we are cooperatively co-creating our experience every single day. Everything I'm doing is affecting somebody else. Like that's that, you know, you may have heard of it referred to as the butterfly effect. Um, you know, that everything that we do kind of ripples, you know, and it kind of uh, affect, it affects everybody else. So one of the things that I want to talk about is, well, the things that we're going to cover today are human consciousness morality, freedom, occultism, and spirituality. You know, like, I think right now everybody's like, what on earth is happening? Like the world is going crazy. So um, I think let's start with the first question. What does the word occult mean? What, what do you think it means, Emily? Well, before we had this conversation, I thought that it meant demonic. Hmm. I thought it meant satanic. Um, I thought it meant um, secret society. Mm. And then after you educated me some, I realized that literally the word occult means hidden. Yeah. It just means that it's hidden. And I really like what um, Carnivore Superstar says was even through, even though gravitation exists for physics from a long time ago, we discovered it recently, right? In the same way, there are many natural laws that exist in the universe, but we have to discover them. So they were hidden to us. And so now we're discovering them. I mean, and by hidden, I'm sure that he means that, 
obviously someone knew that if you go to the edge of a cliff, you're going to fall down, right? Like, or, or something of that nature. They knew they couldn't fly, right? People knew that. But occult simply means hidden. It refers to knowledge specifically that is hidden. And yes, I believe the same thing that you did, Emily. I thought it was like the devil, you know, something demonic, bad, because we've been trained by all of the institutions and, and all the leaders that, you know, this is a bad word. And I think that that was on purpose because the more that I learn about this, the more I realize that um, it's knowledge that has, has been, it's, it's a, okay. So occultism is a body of knowledge, friends, that, that encompasses the study of hidden laws of nature. And there are, you know, these are laws that cannot be readily seen by our out by our eyes or um, measured by traditional scientific instrumentation, which is the reason why we're saying like, you know, you would have maybe understood gravity or, you know, that if you go to the edge of a cliff, you're going to go down. Um, or if you try to walk off of a building, you're going to fall down, but you may not understand why, like, you probably don't care to know why. You probably never thought too much about it. It's everybody knows you're going to fall down. You know, it's like, um, I think what people call common sense, common sensical. Um, and so that would be any of these universal natural laws that you see with your eyes. The sun goes down every night. The sun comes up every day. You know, like the things that you can see with your eyes. Um, but... I think that we all know that many of us have no idea how nature works as evidenced by the, you know, behavior of everybody over the past two years. And, um, and so anyway, <laughs> this is like, you know, like, I want you to think about like, who knows about these universal laws? You know, there are many people with great influence and I'm talking about people in politics, banking, media, law, um, military, entertainment, law enforcement, technology, medicine, education. Um, among, among their ranks, there are many people with great influence and power all working towards one collective goal to increase their own collective power at the expense of everyone else's rights and freedoms. And I think that even they, um, I mean, like, let's just, we're going to refer to them, you guys, as the dark occultists. The dark occultists are actually the ones that we could say are the devil worshipers. That's what we used to call them when we were younger. I don't know. You know, like everything, I mean, I mean, there are dark occultists, but there are also light occultists, meaning light workers. I consider myself to be a de-occultist, someone who is trying to demystify, someone who is trying to speak truth and power over people so that we can take our power back because I'm going to use Emily as an example. Emily, when I met you at the beginning, I remember that the first thing she said to me was, I want to hear what you have to say, Nithi. You know, I am, um, I'm on food stamps and I can't do better with my food. Living in a camper. <laughs> she was arguing for her limitations left, right, and center. Right, Emily? Mm -hmm. And what did I say? What did I say? You said that I am worthy. You said I'm worthy of bust. And I was just like, I was like, this lady doesn't know me. Like I'm, I'm on food stamps living in a camper, like, you know, and, and what was amazing to me was all I did was take a, a bite of what you said and I just absorbed it. And I was just like, what if me these right? What if I am worthy? And you taught me how to just take what I have and do the best with what I have and look. And so I literally took a hundred dollars. You told, you taught me this, take a hundred dollars to your local farm and say, what can you give me for this? Yeah. And that's all I did. And ever since that day, I have never eaten food, beat meat out of the grocery store. I haven't had to. I eat the best meat and fat of the land. 
And I am worthy of that every single day of my life. And at first it was just like, I clung to you. And I was like, oh, you know, Nidhi taught me this and Nidhi taught me that. And you did, and you're amazing. But then you quickly pushed it back on me and said, no, 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 no. I just told you, you were already worthy. You, it was already a natural law. Right. It, was it has already nothing to there. do with me. I mean, no. it does have to do with me in the sense of, you know, look, I, 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 I know that we are all one love, you guys. We are all one. If I allow her to hurt herself, I'm just hurting myself. Like, I don't even understand why I would watch her diminish and hurt herself. It really bothers me, really, honestly, everybody. Like, it bothers me so much when other people are like, you know, when it rains, it pours. Or, oh, I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't afford that. And I just feel like saying, and I say this to people, I say, well, I'm sorry that you believe you can't afford it. I'm sorry that you believe that. Who, who allows you to believe this? You know? Yeah. That's what I loved is that you, you shook up my, my foundation of my thinking and I love what BNS says is no matter how long darkness is there in a place, once light enters, there will no, uh, there will be no darkness from that moment. And so that was literally all you did is you just went, you, you didn't even like shine a flashlight. You just went eh, like just for a second. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what was that light? What was that truth? Mm -hmm. And then I went in and then literally like, I can't have a bad day. Like this, this truth is I can't unsee it. You can't, can't hear it. Yeah. It. I mean, I, 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 look, um, I was just hanging out with, um, with, you know, some great leaders last week. I was hanging out with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I was hanging out with, um, you know, I don't know how many people here know the great economist, Catherine Austin Fitz. Or, you know, like Sally Morrell, Morrell um, or Sally Fallon, you know, from the Weston A. Price Foundation. And so we were all hanging out in Knoxville, Tennessee. And, you know, one of the things that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. said about this movement is about this truth movement, you know, this truth movement that we're all on is that once, once someone, you know, once you've turned them onto truth, once they've realized the truth, they don't ever go back to the lies. They can't ever go back to the lies. And so that is that is what my goal in this conversation is, friends. I wanted to, and I was telling Emily, I said, you know, like I could probably just jump on live by myself. I just think that it's really difficult to have these conversations ourselves. And I think um, it's nice to be able to share it with friends. And so thank you, Emily, for making time to jump on here with me so that we could talk about it because she and I have been talking about love as a divine solvent of everything for a long time, for years now. And years. so I want y'all to understand, you know, cause folks are saying like, what in the world is going on? What in the world is going on? Who are these people that are coming for us? You know, and then they're, you know, there's, you know, people are calling us these bad names. Like we're conspiracy theorists. Who are these people? It is the people of great influence. They are our few. They're, they are the few. They're the few people who understand this occulted knowledge. This occulted knowledge that we want to de-occult means to unveil, to reveal truth. De-occulting means to stop hiding. And a lot of light workers, you know, Emily, in the past used to feel that they needed to hide these truths, these hidden laws also, uh, because they felt like if we reveal them, then the devil can get to know, or the people who want to use it for bad or for evil, that they would be able to do that. But you know, what I believe is 100%, everybody who knows the truth, if you know the truth, then no, no devilish person can use that truth against you because you'll be able to see that this, you'll be able to see their trickery. It's not a trick anymore. It's only a trick when you don't know. Like when I told you that you could afford regenerative meat, like I don't hear that you can't. The only reason you can't is because you just don't want to. 
First, she said, I can't find it. It's nowhere near me. It's not close. It's going to be too expensive. It's going to be too far. It's going to cost too much money for me to go get it. Where am I going to put it? I don't even have a freezer. Are you in a trailer anymore? No. How did you get out of this trailer, girl? How did you um, get out of the trailer? I realized I was worthy. I realized. Well, let, me, let me tell y'all. When I met this woman, she was in a trailer. She was a camper, she was, not even a trailer, okay. y'all. Camper. There's a, a camper. difference between a trailer and a camper. Like, like, like you're supposed to be water, in a camper right? for like the weekend. Okay. I was living in a camper with my son. <laughs> yeah. And, and people believed that she was not capable of taking care of her son at that time. Because Emily has overcome mental illness and all kinds of issues just with real food, with truth, with truth. Because people say food is medicine, but they don't believe meat is medicine and meat is real food. Friends, let me just break it to you right now. That's one of the occulted truths is that meat is poisoning us and no, it is not. Now, you do want to have the highest quality meat. That's a different conversation. We're not going to go there today. Back to this, back to this. Did you hear what I said? There are many people of great influence. These are leaders in politics, banking, media, law, uh, military, entertainment, law enforcement, which is different than the law, legal system people. Okay, let's just clarify that. Technology, medicine, and education. It's all, all the aspects. All, all of the centralized systems. Among their ranks, there are many people with great influence and power, all working towards one collective goal. They're working together while they want all of us to be divided because we're not supposed to love each other because we're black or we're white or we're a man or we're a woman or whatever. And then they're trying to make us even more divisive by trying to tell us that we can be anything we want to be, which means that now you got these Poor children who believe that they are furries or whatever, something crazy. And let me just explain to you guys that that it goes against the laws of the universe. It goes against the laws of the universe. Well, what happens when you defy the law of gravity, friends? What happens? What happens, Emily? You can't. If That's you what. That's one thing I love about this, because when I first started listening to you, there were moments where, because I was still in that, uh, that slave thinking where I would be scared. I would be like, Oh, Nevi's talking about scary things. And, and I, I like my slave life and I like my, you know, whys and everything. But then whenever I realized that love was the, the divine solvent, and even if these hidden um, natural laws came to light, there's a fail safe on it. Even the worst of the worst people can find this information and they can't do it because you have to authentically, genuinely, unconditionally love. love. Love is the divine solvent. So you can't abuse somebody with love. Right. Like, Yes, you can. You can, you know, manipulate. Well, they don't know what love is. Let's be very but clear. Not true love, not true no. love. Because love, okay, so current, currently there's a lot of um, a lot of misunderstandings, and this is all on purpose, friends. We are what you refer to, um, well, we're, we're not anymore, me and Emily, since we've stepped out of this. We're the evidence. We're evidence for anybody who wants to see the evidence, okay? Um, but, I mean, like, I've lost a child, and I've been able to find my way back to joy and love. In the highest emotional realm, most people are still not able to even get past contentment, right? They can't even get past contentment. This is happening because the dark occultists, um, they care enough. They care. This is, this is something interesting. They care so much um, about keeping this knowledge hidden um, so that the majority of humanity remains ignorant so that they can manipulate you because they're actually master psychologists, these people. And they utilize their deep and ancient knowledge of the human psyche and the hidden laws of nature to deceive and manipulate the masses of humanity into total subservience to their will. As they've, 
evidently done in the past couple of years. They shut the world down, friends. They shut the world down. And they do this out of fear. Fear. Fear is never to be given any power under natural law. Never. Because the well-being is everywhere. And so that's these are ways in which we have been immorally living. Let's talk about that because, you know, what they're doing, guys, is they're taking a knowledge differential and they're converting it into their power differential in our world. You hear what I'm saying? Did y'all mm -hmm. catch that? They're taking their knowledge differential. A lot of times when I talk to people about universal law, they don't want to hear what I have to say. They, they already know. We already know these things, you know. You think nature is great, Nisi. We get it. Okay. You already, you already keep saying, you know, nature is so great. Okay, whatever. I need a mask. I need a medicine. I need a vaccination. I need a drug. I need something. I need something. I need man-made interference. No, 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 friends. That's We don't. We don't need anything except knowledge. We need this hidden knowledge. And so over the next several weeks, months, if it years, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. People have always said, Emily, they've said to me, what do you do, Nisi? What do you do? I'm like, whatever it takes, friends. What, whatever it takes. What does it, what's it going to take? What well, is it going to take? My, my favorite thing that you taught me, and I go back to this all the time, is that nature has grace. And so all we got to do is just start where we're at. And the people that come to me and they're just so chock full of these lies, it's such a belief to them. All I got to do is just shine a little bit of light, just shine a little bit of light and then just pick off one lie and go, Hey, what if, what if this isn't true? Oh, what if that isn't true? And then they question, maybe this lie isn't true. And then they remove it. And then they're this is a little bit more free and a little bit more free. Um, and so that that's what I love is that whenever I recognize that nature has grace, it takes away the fear of, oh my gosh, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I've already messed up so much. What can I do now? What do I need to do now? You need to do exactly what you are doing. Just more of it. Right. Right. Morality. <clears throat> what is morality? I think it was immoral that I believed that I was worthless. I do too. I mean, I was a creation of brilliance, absolute brilliance. And I thought I was broken. I totally believed that I was worthless and useless. And I had no idea the light that was inside of me. And, and so I feel like it was, it was literally so against like nature was, for me to believe that I was broken. To believe that I was broken. That's one thing that I was really um, loving about you. And I, I thought it was fascinating that you knew that you could see the brilliance in other people, but you could never see it in your own self. Yep. That was, that was fascinating. We're, we all offer other people more grace then we allow ourselves. And that's the other thing that I want people to understand. You know, um, I, I want to, I want to try to get, I want to try to get my technology figured out here because I was trying to go live and friends, everything that I was trying to do with Emily today went kind of bonkers. Okay. And we're going to be running out of time here in a second. And I know that I wanted to discuss these, you know, several different topics. I just don't know that we can do it in one second. I think that I would prefer to take a break because we're going to have to break here in a minute. I know, I know, Emily, you have another engagement and we're going to get ready to open up here at the food church as well. Um, but I think that I want everyone to kind of just marinate on what we just talked about. You know, I think that people, people don't understand. One of the things I want y'all to just marinate on is that 
legal legality is not morality. I think everyone thinks that if they're following man's laws, that they are operating under a moral code. And legality is not morality. Legality is man's laws. It's a, it's a man's law. And, and the other thing I want everyone to take home with them today is that it is immoral for a man, any men, any human, to try to rule over another human being. That goes 100% against natural law. No, no human is more worthy than another human. No one human is more worthy. If I, what would have happened if I'd have thought I was better than you, Emily? Just because I knew something before you did. I, I mean, wouldn't other... have heard it. The reason I heard what you said was because all I heard when you opened your mouth, mouth was love. That's all I heard every time, even when I was going against everything that you said, all I heard was love. And uh, BNS says hurricane plus pure uh, is a force for good. He That's my nickname. Uh, he calls me pure Aww. and he calls you hurricane. So a pure hurricane <laughs> is coming at y'all. <laughs> yes. Amen. Okay. So me and Emily are going to figure this whole like glitchy thing out. We're going to try to figure out how to go live on YouTube, Insta, and and somehow record this, the series. I would really like to do this, Emily. And so I'm, I'm kind of putting you under the gun and asking you to make a commitment to try to do this with me every week, once a week. Let's um, go. I just think that this is such a very important conversation. And we are just, you know, just, just touching the top, just touching it right now, just gently with our pinky. Um, <laughs> I just want people to understand that there are requirements, there are requirements for us to operate under that have immediate consequences under natural law. And we're hurting ourselves and what other if, people, but you know, mostly ourselves. <laughs> what if you hadn't, what if you hadn't opened your mouth? What if you hadn't spoke? I just can't even what if you speak? hadn't even said something to me? Oh, right. I know. You know, honestly, I didn't know Emily back then at all. And I was just running my mouth at her. And I just came at her like the hurricane. <laughs> well, I just, I mean, honestly, guys, anybody who's been following me at all, they know that, you know, we've been through a lot. I didn't come here lightly. People know that I've lost a child. And, you know, you can't, I can't just know these truths and just simply not you know, I can't listen to someone speaking lies and just not say anything. And, but I will, I will love you where you are at. And, and you did. I, yeah. I mean, Emily knows that I loved her where she was. She couldn't understand what I was saying. And I didn't disappear out of her life and stomp out of her life and be like, this crazy woman. I didn't, I did not do that. I just was like, she can't understand what I'm saying right now, you know, and I have been doing that and I have been holding the line with people here in our food church who can also attest to this, that I just am on repeat, been doing it for 13 years. People can't understand what I'm saying. You know, they come in thinking I'm just this crazy person and they also don't go away. Usually when people listen to something that I've said, then they think I'm crazy and then they turn around and they walk away and then they have to keep coming back because they're just like, I mean, I don't know what they actually, I don't know what you, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Tell me that anything that we said today isn't true. Tell me that anything that we revealed today um, is hogwash and we will just shut up. We will stop it. Well, no, I'd just we be won't. like, Emily, they no, said we it won't. Huh? I know. <laughs> We're never going to shut up. Yeah, you can just gonna... go, you can just unfollow us and go, go listen to someone else. Yeah, but I think that um, it is time. It is time. It can't just simply be that I understand this by myself. I've been doing this for what I feel like is by myself for 13 years. And slowly and slowly, I get one more person and one more person and one more person and one more person. So you guys out there, y'all are the generals. I am here 
to light a fire under you. I am, I am calling all Oath Keepers. I, I mean, tell me that what I just said today is nonsense. Tell me that what I said today is not true. Show me the evidence of what, how what I said is untrue. And I'm going to be trying to meantime conquer this technology. That's, that's my biggest hiccup. And I think it's probably just all the truth I try to pour out into the world that the folks that are out there in technology land who are occulting this hidden knowledge, they probably just are scrambling my channel to that. Ooh, I love what BNS just said. When we discover a natural law, we become so enthusiastic to share with others. The real etymology of enthusiasm means God within. Mm. So God possesses us to share the truth. Yes. We are possessed that. with enthusiasm. We are. But I have to go. I know. We have to go. We love you guys so much. And next Thursday, maybe? We don't uh, know. We don't know the time, but we'll we'll figure it out. We'll we'll try and make it regularly. We're gonna figure this out, friends. We're gonna figure it out. We love you. Stay tuned. Stay tuned in, okay? Bye. All right. <laughs>